I'll intro. Hello, Internet Land. It's Project Clinic. Don't know what Hello. number. Don't care. Uh, this is where Belina uh, have a Q and A <laughs> session. So uh, we talk about projects and we answer any questions. If you're doing a project or you'd like to, and you've got questions, then uh, you can put them into the YouTube chat, and we'll get to them like some sort of breaking news. We'll we'll halt whatever waffles going on and get to your question. Uh, so let's meet the panel today. My name's Phil. I generally work in labs when I'm allowed. Um, uh, I make projects and generally hack on stuff. Andrew. Hey, Andrew Nam, product builder, content operations. I make stuff, I break stuff. By the way, it's episode four. It's on the top of the screen. My friend. Who cares? Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Numbers are hard. Exactly. Andrew, that sweater is just, it's, that's beautiful. I love that. Yeah. Feels Thanks. too Christmassy. Plus, your, your haircut seems like. I, anyway, I just. Buckles. <laughs> I work in mostly hardware, so I'm working um, for Internet Pro, testing QA stuff, um, also breaking things, but trying to stop them from breaking most of the time. Um, yeah. Do you know what I'm realizing? You know Belina like hard problems. I reckon the hardest problem is describing quickly what you do at Belina. Absolutely. Uh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> It's uh, definitely a, mo a moving target as well. <laughs> <laughs> Tomas. I'm going to try to to one-line it. I also work in labs and occasionally do other stuff. I'm on the OS team. I hang out in the labs a lot. I'm currently doing some registry stuff, uh, but primarily OS building and hacking. Labs yeah. wannabe. Hey, did you say rent yep. free stuff? Registry. Oh, registry. Our, our, our open registry. <laughs> I was like, geez, that's how you really feel. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's tough because at Belina, for anybody watching from outside of Belina, um, we don't really define ourselves in certain jobs and we don't really have teams. We definitely don't have siloed teams. We sort of just move around and solve hard problems that we're motivated to solve. So when you talk to a Belina person, they might have a general theme to their job, <laughs> but they certainly <laughs> won't have a I do this type answer, most likely, unless you speak to somebody like Alex and then he's the CEO, his is his is, uh, other Alex Alexandros. His is more of a defined role than the rest of us. <laughs> uh, right. Um so yeah, if you want to put anything into the chat, who we got Anuj in the chat already, um we can answer them. Yep. <laughs> yeah, so well, I don't want to think about Christmas yet. As far as prepared remarks go, I know we have some networking tips and tricks that Tomas wants to go to. We actually have two forum questions that we can cover. So how do you want to start? Maybe that'll get the juices going and people will throw in stuff on the chat. OK. Yep, yep. Do you want me to go with the networking stuff? Let's yeah. go. Actually, it's not, it's not really that I'm bringing some tips, but I'm bringing some uh, ideas and I'm interesting to hear uh, other people's thoughts. So the topic in question is the one of um, communication between uh, containers, between services. Um, you know, if you have a couple of services that are uh, running in like a bridge mode, networking uh, in bridge mode, then it's easy because you can just address the other service by its name. So service A, service B will resolve to uh, whatever the IP address of the service is. Um, the question is, or, or rather the problem uh, I was uh, facing initially for Balina Sound is that when you have a lot of services and some of them are in bridge mode, some of them are in host mode, you suddenly have this uh, combination of, uh, like, I guess there are four possibilities. Like a bridge service can talk to a bridge service or a host service. And then a host service can also talk to a bridge service and a host service, if that makes sense. So it's four options and um, each one is, uh, I guess, different. So if we quickly go over them, like any service that is running in, host mode, or rather, if you want to access, uh, um, let's say, a web server that's on a service that's running in host mode, 
um, then you can use, for example, localhost, right? Uh, you do localhost on whatever the port is, and then that's it, you're fine. Um, but what happens if you want to do the same from our service that's in bridge mode, right? Like localhost will resolve to the bridge's own uh, IP address, so that won't work. Um, so that's where, where things get interesting. And I'm interested to hear uh, how other people uh, go around this. The, I guess the solution or one of the most uh, common solutions I've seen is to, uh, from the bridge mode service, query the, or not query, like uh, look up the uh, default IP route which typically is the um, the like 0 0.1 address of the uh, internal bridge network, which will typically be the host one. Um, and that's what we do for Balina Sound, for instance. Um, but I don't know if there are other solutions or other um, alternatives to for this problem. Um, interested to hear about that. And the last I... thing I'm going to say is... Okay, go on. Yeah, no, go, go, go. I was going to say, like, is it worth me doing this and just like, just making sure the audience are being brought on with us? So in this example, I've got on my fin, I'm actually running a test version of something, which is why it's flashing past and login. But I've got all these different services. And what yeah. you're talking about is that you want to be able to connect them via a network so that a service can yeah. talk to another service. So, and so in this yeah. case, for instance, if you look at my Docker Compose behind here, my sensor is connected to the network in host mode, which means mm -hmm. it uses the device's network layer itself. And therefore, um, it has access to any port on the device. Right. Whereas something like my influx container uh, here, I haven't specified yeah. what network mode it's working in. And so, so by default, by it's, default it, it's using yeah. the bridge, which means it's connected to a Docker network. It's not the device right. network layer. Perhaps, do you have uh, MS Paint? Can you open MS Paint? <laughs> Are you trolling me, Tomas? <laughs> no, no, I'm not 100% serious. Why do you want MS Paint rather than anything else? I'd, Be because I want to visually <laughs> Why are we using MS Paint? The, the four <laughs> alternatives. Uh, so we can do, so oh, Buck will show me this. You can do new dot slide. Can you do slide? Yeah, but you don't get the OG cred. Oh, slide dot new. Slide dot new. It's slide dot new. Slide dot new. Uh, slide dot new. Are you sure? I think so. Oh, look at that! Oh, there you go. Genius. Nice. Can you nice. draw in there? <laughs> Challenge me. <laughs> what are we drawing? <laughs> uh, can you do like a three by three uh, chart? Not chart. Uh, Table? table table hey everyone welcome to our google slides demo <laughs> yeah <laughs> what uh why are we doing it this is probably way easier to explain visually i guess i am okay a, i am a incredibly amused so this is so cool. you got uh bridge and host in both axes so you have four combinations right so you want uh you want bridge here yeah and host. Bridge, host. And bridge. Exactly. Uh, host. No, I'm no right. slouch. Yeah. So let's start by uh, with the last row, host. So if you have a service running in host mode. So the, so this top one to is work. service. And um, what is what is uh, this? Yeah, like source, source service and target service. So you're on a, the, the columns. The first yeah. column, I guess, is the source service from where you are trying to talk to someone else yeah no the other way around well it's the same i mean <laughs> it doesn't matter, it doesn't I, I'm matter. not sure why we needed a, a drawing program for this isn't this what spreadsheets are for well, i didn't know what we were doing he said ms paint <laughs> yeah I, that wasn't i'm not saying that was a good suggestion either like <laughs> a sheet just would have been faster Right, so so Probably. if your service is using host mode, yeah, and you want to talk to a, another service that's in bridge mode, is that what you're saying? That's the the hard one. Because so host and host do... is 
easy, isn't local it? Because host. all you need to know yeah. is you need the local host and you need yeah. the port. Host, and then... to br host to bridge um, is also... No, so the you've other got one. one service that's using host mode and it's going to talk to something in bridge mode, but it can identify yes. the container by the service name. No. And the, and the port. Host. That's true for bridge to bridge anyway. Yeah, no, that won't work if the service you are in is in host mode. So bridge to bridge, you can do service name. You can yes. fill in. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, that, easy makes one. that makes sense, yeah. And then the other one that's easy is uh host to bridge. So the Herald. last row. <laughs> Thank you for not, your not valuable input, Harold. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Which is on brand for Harold. We appreciate you, man. This, this is next level, isn't it? Let's draw a draw yeah. a diagram with only using comments from YouTube. <laughs> you said you wanted to work in the open. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. Yeah. This, this is fine. This is, this is great. open brainstorm. Okay. So yeah. let's do love it. host to bridge, which is yeah. the bottom row. Yes. That one. That's also local host. You can do local host and port, and that mm -hmm. will work. If the port's been exposed, it has to actually uh, yeah, have the, the port command. Um, exactly. They won't just be. They won't all be available. Only the ones you specified in the compose yep. file for the bridge yep, exactly. service. Right. Uh, this is actually getting somewhere, Thomas. So I, I take it all back. This is valuable. Yeah. Thank you. Um, <laughs> it could have been so that leaves, us, <laughs> <laughs> that, that leaves us with with a uh, bridge to host. And right. So for my simple is, brain, so you've, you've got a yeah. service that's running in bridge mode and you want to talk to another service that's using host mode. Exactly. You cannot use local host because local host in yeah. this context will mean uh, the, container. the bridge yep. container. Uh, you can also not use service name because... Because uh, the one you're uh, trying to talk to doesn't resolve via it. internal exactly. DNS. Yeah. Exactly. So Thomas's so, suggestion of the gateway IP is typically the best way to reach it in that case. I think. What's the gateway yeah. IP? You have to look it up. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, when you're running on a bridge mode, you're part of an internal network. Yeah. And that internal network has a gateway, which is the host to it, right? So if you get the IP address of the host OS, that's somewhat equivalent of getting like local host or you are able to address the host OS. That's the the gist of it. Okay. And so if you're on if you're IP able to address they get you to extract your gateway from shell or whatever yeah. tool you're using. If you get the exactly. gateway from within the container and address that as if it were your local host, it'll it'll behave because it is at that point that's the IP address of the host network stack as it's attached to the bridge. Um, you just have to run some commands manually because it changes. It's not going to be static. So you have to get back, it from the environment. If we come back to my device here, my local my local IP address. In fact, I've got two. Yeah. Um, but you also have a Docker IP yeah. address. Yeah. And you need if to you go get into the thing. container, we can show you. Which container, dude? Not the one. Any that bridge into. container. Anyone in bridge. Not one that's crashing. Uh, let me. What, For example, what? InfluxDB. Is the one on running in bridge mode? Um, yes, it is. So Influx DB. For all of these different permutations, are they all, is this specific to a certain kind of use case? Or is it really just like how you configure your containers and how they talk to each other? Good question. Um, sometimes you're forced to, or not forced, but it's more convenient to have a container in host or bridge mode. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you're kind of forced into this configuration, like into one of these permutations. Oh, Ian's got the perfect command. Uh, if IF config is available, we might not have IF config. We might need IP ADDR. You can see if IF config. Nope. Yeah, see, it's not in any modern systems. Try IP IP space ADDR show and see what they all are. Yeah. Does it show your gateway in that command? Nope. Oh. Mm, yes. No, that's your address. That's your bridge address. It doesn't show your gateway with that one. Oh, okay. Um, what command's going to show your gateway? I don't know. Tomas, what one do you normally use? I can look it up. Tomas just had a 
yeah. a bit of an Argentinian internet moment. <laughs> oh, no. um, what are we looking at? Uh, just how to uh, get the gateway from in a container. It's going to depend on your container. Uh, yeah. I just want to get some modern commands that aren't IP config or IF config because nobody uses that anymore. And this is the one I'm is... using. It's linked. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, it's modern and Kyle approved. You, if if you run it without the, uh, if you just run IP route, you can see it visually, which is also good. You uh, forgot a space and a close quote there, but. Oh yeah. Where's my space missing? After default. That's part of the awk command. Where's the space in that? Is it after the before after the, the T? Yeah, there you go. There's your Ooh, gateway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that yeah. will resolve to the host um, with... host network stack. So, so you can just, address yeah. things on the host. We're just filtering the yep. IP route there with awk. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so this is how uh, I've been doing it. Um, I don't know. Sometimes I wish there was like a single way. Uh, that, that's probably one command. of the most reliable ways. I, I approve that one. And to respond to a new, IF config hasn't been used in Debian in five or six years at least. It's not included by default anymore. This feels shaming. And Nuj, I, ooh, I apologize for Carl. You can use any command you feel comfortable with. It doesn't mean you're out of touch and old fashioned. <laughs> probably uses nano as well, right? Hmm. Oh. Hey. Um, well, I mean, and it... I learned things there. And I didn't know where we were going when we started drawing. Things. Yeah, I, I should have started yeah, with the drawing <laughs> or the sheet. <laughs> I, ha I, I have a bonus question that um, stems from this, which is, what if you want to get the uh, LAN network IP address, like the one you showed on the dashboard? Um, the, oh, right. same command, the same command you just run will get you that IP address if you run it on a uh, network mode host service. Mm -hmm. But if you're on a bridge service, is there a way to get that IP address? Does the supervisor know it? Can you get it from the supervisor API? Yes, that's one option. Mm -hmm. So but if anybody else watching along, there's obviously a service that runs on all Belena devices called the supervisor. And it does a number of things, including making sure the containers that you want to run for the release that the device is running are actually running and download them and make them run if it's not. But it could do many things. It's got an API that you can curl things to um, and get information back. Like, I'm pretty sure you can get the IP address of the device. Sounds like Tomas had another idea, though. I want to hear it. No, I don't want to have an idea. I want <laughs> you someone want more to ideas. give me a, a smart solution. Like, yeah, say you don't want to use the supervisor route. Like, is there a way to get it? Well, it's I haven't intentionally found one. isolated. And yes, if you do problem, something right? like curling a web address, it's going to show you your external gateway IP, like your router's IP, and your your modem's IP. It won't show you the LAN IP. So that's it's not going to be super straightforward because Docker's intentionally obscuring that from you Isolated. and making yeah. you go through multiple yeah. hops. Um, Why I wonder would if you a tracer it would show it. What's that? Like, why would you not use the supervisor API since it's definitely on the device and it's definitely going to give you um, information with a curl command? You wouldn't, for example, because let's for a particular scenario where you don't uh, want to wait for the supervisor to start. Um, like, yeah. say you want to, you need to know the API address, like as soon as your container starts and yeah. you don't uh, like, yeah, you can't wait for whatever reason. That's one scenario, um, and that's actually one of the you could use or the, not the problems, but because we need to know for Balina like. Sound, yeah. Because we need to know for Balina Sound uh, this IP address, uh, we need to wait for the supervisor to start, and that introduces not only like a uh, some latency, but also this dependency. Whereas if the supervisor doesn't start, then nothing else starts, which is mm -hmm. it's kind of not ideal. Um, but yeah, it, it is what it is. 
I guess. And so the I can service... think of worse ways, not better ways. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's. I can think of ways that are way more convoluted, take up a lot more space, and take even longer. But, but so far, I haven't thought of one uh, that would be faster and easier. Uh, well, if you someone you know, though. that's watching comes up with has any ideas, please. Well, my idea is uh, you could use the Belena API. Uh, you could use supervisor API, or I guess you would run the service that needs to get the IP in host mode so you can get it. Oh, like have a block specifically for getting you the IP address. There's another good idea. Ooh. <laughs> but then I guess you're going to have the same issue there with the supervisor that you can't guarantee that that block is going to be up and running before the block, unless you depend upon it. Mm -hmm. um, you can make it start. I mean, if it's lightweight, it should start a lot should. faster. Which yeah. should. Yeah. You, but I it might it's download it. last. Yeah. You don't know. Yeah. yeah, that's true. If you're pushing a new release, it might be last in the queue to download just because it it's somewhat random. Um, and I guess anything that you're going to use, really, you want to like back off retry. You want to sort of try and see if it's up and yeah. get the address. And if it isn't, then wait. And then like incrementally wait until it finally returns the answer. I wonder if a tracer it returns anything interesting because it would have to go through that extra hop through the bridge, but I don't know if it would actually report the LAN IP during trace route or if it would try just it. show you like your router first. Just try it. You could try it. Yeah. Let's trace route to, to Google or Cloudflare or something and see if uh, the LAN IP shows up as a hop. It's not on the service that I just had open. Okay. <laughs> and I can never remember if it's trace root or later. trace RT because it's different in Windows and Linux. Yeah. It is trace I think it's just trace. Might be just trace. Nope. Okay. Trace route to external public web. Oh, sorry, I should put this. That's what I'm saying. Thank you, commenters. Check for hop. If you want to hop on the stream, Ian, and just live hack it. Oh, he's 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 celebrating Diwali. He's ah, he's happily nice. on holiday. Nice. Taking the time to catch up with us here. Much appreciated. <laughs> um. Well, that does that answer some of your questions? I've definitely learned from that, Tomas. If nothing else, um, I'm glad you learned. Yeah, uh, yeah. I just wanted to share this and, and see what if yeah. there's something else I'm missing or just, any just smarter way to do this. Go all the way and make that table uh, open to the public. <laughs> yeah. If anyone has any suggestions, yeah, yeah. Put them in. Put them, put in, them in the chat. Somewhere. God, where are you pointing, man? <laughs> Um, or if you're watching this after the event, then uh, ping us on Twitter or yeah. go on the forums and say IOT Clinic at Balina.io. <laughs> Tell us how that, we're wrong. If you're right there, it, it's, it, it will eventually get to us. Uh, trace route didn't work for me. It shows my gateway. So trace route shows the bridge gateway. So that's it shows the host IP and it shows my router IP, but it does not show my LAN IP. At least with the default trace route to an external server. But maybe there's some flags that can be added to get more detail. Something worth exploring later. Yeah. I think um, trace route only shows gateways, right? Yeah, exactly. So, yes. it, so that's, it won't that's another show... method to get the host gateway, which is great. Um, but it won't show your LAN IP because that's, right. that's an interface, not a gateway. Here we go. Here, you keep packing on that, Kyle. We're going to go through some of the. No, I'm done. I've moved on. I'm bored. Oh, wow. That was quick. That was quick. <laughs> so not only do we love it when folks out there use one of our many projects, but we love it when you try and mod it and you try and add some some extra goodies to it. And this was yeah. a really great one that came out of the forums here where a user got Blenda Sound running, got Multi-Room running, um, and wanted to uh, use their Snap client to, was it just volume, it looks like? And wanted some just help walking through the architecture side of things, which is these questions are money on the forums. We love this because I mean, we love the troubleshooting ones too, but these are the ones that really stretch our use cases because that's what we want to know. We want to learn how to make all our products uh, as great as we can. So. Can somebody explain to me like I'm five, snap client to control volume? I don't Sorry. understand. I can, I can give it a go. Do you have MS you Paint? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so Balian Sound, 
by the way, I didn't realize this was uh, Thomas Thomas's special episode today. Oh, Sorry yeah, for that. Sure. <laughs> Uh, so Balina Sound uh, uses uh, this protocol software thing called uh, Snap uh, Snapcast to do multi-room audio, to synchronize multiple devices and have them run, like output the same audio uh, precisely at the same uh, time stamp, so in sync. Um, and the question uh, this user is asking here is about like, he wants to have some sort of dashboard where he's able to control volume for all devices, uh, like from one single uh, place. So um, Snapcast is a generic kind of message brokering, is it? Uh, not really a message. Like it has a built-in like message, uh, yeah. yeah, with discovery of other uh, devices that runs Snapcast, but it's specifically ta tailored for uh, uh, running audio in sync. So right. You cannot use it for other stuff. Like but what this user only... here is saying is that they would like to use it for an additional use case, which is sending commands to the Belena Sounder device. Um, not really. Like he wants to be able to control volume um, for all devices that are running the Snapcast mm -hmm. uh, software or Balina Sound. Um, and the there are some options that he, he describes here, which is like there are uh, Snapcast clients. Um, you have applications or or even uh, websites like that you can compile and uh, point towards the, the server, and then it uh, they can the show an interface. But they are mostly um, ugly. I would say like it's only just a slider or don't have like a mute button, which seems kind of basic, but um so there is the, the the thing is there is no real uh good software out there for this so he was asking about this and i, I think the interesting thing thing here is that we have two uh problems i guess or two features that we are uh developing somewhat for uh, our roadmap one is the one of uh, local ui uh local ui is this uh concept or idea where you uh, you would have a, like a web page for your Balina devices um, that will give you like uh, control over some uh, basic device stuff, like managing the device, uh, rebooting it, uh, service control, like it's somewhat similar to like the a local version of the dashboard, but for your device, um, you could also like uh, control environment variables and all that. Um, and ideally, if you can uh, add some custom components, you could add, for instance, uh, a volume slider. This is a particular uh, example for Valina Sound, but uh, we could do that. Um, but the thing that complicates things here uh, further is that uh, you have a fleet of devices, and if you want to change the volume for, I don't know, 10 devices or five devices or three devices, uh, like, you would want to do it from a single place and not have to go to three different URLs and adjust sliders on three different pages. Yeah. Um, so that's the that, that's a real pr uh, problem here. We do have a, a very basic local UI attempt for Balina Sound. It's somewhat experimental, and here the user is supporting that it's not working for them. Um, the problem with that is that it's just, it's it only knows about itself, so it doesn't yeah. know about other devices in the fleet. Um, You'd have to get onto the local UI for every device exactly. to change the volume. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's why he was trying to use a, a Snapcast client because the I... Snapcast protocol knows it's aware of other devices that it's talking to. So. If you use and I guess Snapcast... it's worth saying that you can set the volume via a fleet variable, and so all the devices yeah. would have the same volume. But each time you change an environment variable in Elena, everything restarts. At least the containers that it affects would restart. Yeah. yeah. So each time you adjusted the volume, at least one container on every device mm. would restart before it then starts playing music again. And you can decide if that's the volume you want. Exactly. Um, so, so basically, the 
easier uh, solution here is to rely on, on Snapcast because Snapcast is aware of other devices. Um, so what I did is I pointed the user to like a Snapcast API on a few resources that can get them started to, to build this. Uh, this is something we would like to have for Balina Sound. Um, we would like to solve this uh, like at a Valina level, I guess. So not rely on Snapcast to to do the discovery that there are other service uh, devices in the fleet and, and all that. So we ideally, know our that using code we know JS, that, don't we? Yeah, yeah, Oops. yeah, yeah. I didn't mean to do that. We also know that because it's part of like uh, if your device is a part of a fleet, we know how many devices are in that fleet. Um, yeah. So uh, ideally, we want to solve this without relying on Snapcast, just yeah. relying of, on Valina technology. Uh, yeah. And that's the reason why we haven't pushed, uh, or at least I haven't pushed uh, this particular feature uh, for Valina Sound. Um, we are kind of waiting on, on a local UI uh, development uh, to see where that goes and how we can take advantage of that and not rely on Snapcast. Uh, as a solution, but you can perfectly do it this with Snapcast technology. There is an API which allows you to control volume, to mute, to do all sorts of uh, stuff to the client. Um, and there's even uh, Snapcast offers like a, a web page that uh, a website that they built that's very basic but kind of does the job. Um, so you you could build something uh, nice with that. Uh, it's just again that we I don't think at the moment that's uh, the the best um, solution for us. Um, I don't know if in the future we decide to stop using Snapcast and use something else, for example, Pulse Audio, which is uh, the audio what the audio block runs. You can also do multi-room audio with Pulse Audio, and it's something that I want to test in the future. So, and if that works uh, okay, then we don't need Snapcast anymore. And that means we have two less services in Valina Sound. Each one of them are like 150 to 200 megabytes. So that's like 400 megabytes less than you need to download. Two services less you need to run. So I don't know. Can I, I think this is a great, oh, go ahead, Phil. Uh, can I ask random questions for you to laugh at? <laughs> Please so, do. Like you said, since we since we know we're running on Belina with Belina Sound, then we already know all the devices in the fleet. At an API yeah. level, we know all of the devices that are in the fleet, and we know how to contact those devices because they're all connected to the same VPN. Yep. So, is there something we can do? Probably a block that you can drop into any application, and it will give you. Uh, a network messaging connection between any device in that fleet, like like Snapcast is doing, but without having to do discovery, which I guess also only works on a local network and doesn't work across networks. Whereas this um, will work across networks. I guess that would be cool. Um, I I think that's useful as long as it doesn't rely on. Um, internet connectivity is fun it doesn't rely on the api specifically like yeah what it, it needs to work on a, a, a an air gapped uh, network definitely um mm -hmm. like yeah but but i i do see the it, it, it yeah it's if we can build something that you drop in and then any device that has that block or piece of software running uh is automatically like aware of other devices in the local network, uh, then that's I think, something useful. Uh, that's similar to what Code.js does for actually Valina Sound. Yeah. So maybe there is there is something uh, we can extract from there. Um, well, one yeah, option I think... is, um, you and I were talking the other day, but for everybody's benefit, there's, there's something called Dapper that Microsoft are developing yeah. but as part of a consortium. <laughs> And it, it's kind of like a framework for making distributed applications. So you run a dapper sidecar on any device that your software is running on. So be that 
a pod in Kubernetes or an edge device as part of a distributed application. And one of the things it does is does that discovery piece so that it knows all the other devices that are running. But again, I think that will probably rely on being on the same local network, but possibly could be extended. If we made something yeah. that used Dapper for local discovery and then augmented it with, if you're connected to the internet, then you can talk to the API and find other devices on other networks via the VPN. Yeah. I'm trying to think of a scenario where you want more than local devices. Um, Maybe in my head it's too focused on building a sound where all that you care about is devices on your network. Um, well, I mean, I know oh, like, okay. like shops often have music playing and yeah. that's piped from somewhere else. Like, you know, the supermarket okay. chains don't have a DJ per shop. They have somebody they playing. No, <laughs> like Asda will have somebody playing music from Asda headquarters and all of the Asda stores will play the same music. Hmm. Um, but similarly, like, it, it, I think you're right that this extends to more than just playing music. A anywhere where you've got devices that are in different networks, but you need um, that sort of fleet. Messaging. But, uh, yeah. yeah, but at a level where you don't want containers to be bouncing when you reconfigure it. It's okay if it's like some kind of largely static configuration that's going to change infrequently. But if it's something that's going to change fairly frequently, then you don't want to use environment yeah. variables and have containers bouncing. Yeah. There's also like the museum use cases where it's the same as the shops plus unique exhibits. Uh, if you're lucky enough to live by a museum that does like a, a lot of audio with yeah. the stuff that they're working on. Um, so even though it's in the same proximity within one another, it, there is value in like separating the networks out. So you can separate like exhibit audio versus like general music out in the halls. So that, it, it led me to wonder like, maybe this is a call to arms to the, to the community. Cause sometimes you have this like really amazing spark of an idea that's going, but you know, we're so focused on maintaining that product we don't have the use case angle so maybe folks out there in the community have right mm -hmm. they're like well i don't have yeah. the spark i have the use case let's get together then right this yeah. is the whole point of this show it's like and what more what, what other ways can we work together um mm -hmm. and have those moments of serendipity where all of a sudden this amazing thing comes out of the woodwork and it doesn't have to be with us balanesis together we would love more community involvement as well also, quick yep. PSA, I leave no Tomas challenge um, unmet. Let's do this. Here's <laughs> my Microsoft paint. I mean, not, are you a I'm great you. artist? I'm not too like, far this off. Is... Go ahead. Like, I wish I had this to, to, to show the forum user. Oh, let's do it. It's not too late. Look, I'm not too far <laughs> off with the Snapcast interpretation, right? I think this is perfect. Much love, Snapcast. Just kidding. <laughs> All right, I have one more from the forums. This one's a little different, though this one caught my eye because um, it was a question asked by a user and like <laughs> three different Balinesas jumped in, two different community members jumped in. It seems like a very opinionated topic. Uh, I figured it'd be worth asking here if folks are ready. Uh-oh, what did I do here? Here we go. I'm clearly a screen share newbie. Here we go. How to execute script on Belena SSH login to container. <laughs> I'm writing a Python interactive command line interface for a device, a dedicated container. And I would like to launch the Python file when I want when I Belena SSH into the container instead of having to type Python script.pi each each time. This is primarily to aid local development as I'm making that restart the container while live push is active. Is there a way effective way to do this? And here we have many different interpretations do we land on the best practice here is it really just like however you like to roll with how you boot up your containers i've tried doing this before and there's a lot of ways to do this with generic docker and ssh essentially the basher c thing and, and variations of that for alpine um sort of work to a degree if you're using standard ssh or doing a docker exec or blana exec into the container and you can have something run and start up to like set some environment variables or run a script for you and that works to some degree but if you're using blana proxy to get an ssh session into the container which is the default if you're using our dashboard or the dashboard 
CLI. Yeah. Um, that doesn't those, work. I, I, what I found is those scripts do not get executed because of the way we start the shell. I might have been oh. doing something wrong, but I believe something uh, in the way we initiate it, we suppress all other environmental scripts and just create our own defined session that doesn't run things that oh. are defined in like bash or C and stuff like that. Um, or ETC profile is a common way to do it as well. Profile is probably more common. Um, so it depends, I think, largely on whether the use case is going to be like logging in by the dashboard or blend a CLI versus like a blend exec from the host or a, a generic SSH command. Like if it's in uh, development mode and you just run SSH and you get a normal SSH session, uh, I think it's going to vary a lot. I don't have a single answer uh, because I struggled with this recently as well. In fact, I went another route that didn't require me setting environment variables when I logged into the container because it was would work one way but not the other. So I just kind of abandoned it. So if somebody has a better idea that works in all cases, I would love to hear it. Phil I have does. a suggestion, oh, but like not for the SSH problem, but specifically for this user. Like they say they are doing uh, development with uh, local mode and they want to run a script whenever they get into the uh, container right um, and there is this obscure uh, live push directive which is uh, let me share the link oh no this is the one that I could have used yesterday isn't it it's uh, dev dash run yeah, which is basically a directive you add in your Docker file. And what this does is um, whatever command you specify there will only be run as part of the Docker file if you are in local mode. So maybe there is a way that this is better for uh, this specific uh, case. Um, I've never used that. I'm going to use that. Next yeah, week, that, sure. it's it's obscure. I know the there's a lot of uh, some people don't really like the live push directives, mm -hmm. even in Balina. They're a very uh, hot topic. Um, and they are definitely obscure. Like, not many people know of the, about them. They do I now. I just this command this week. It's it's definitely a Balina only thing. This is not a Docker feature. Yes. This is something built yes. into our That's... Balina builder that is used by the CLI and live push and things like that. So yeah. I'd never heard of it. And we ran into it um, this week with Ryan that his entry point command or his entry point was running but his command wasn't but it's because he had that little comment in there the um the dev run command and it was set yeah. to like land idle so it was completely ignoring what he'd specified as a command and i couldn't figure it out um it's something that we were parsing out of that one liner and it doesn't matter if you've commented it or anything like that if it finds it it, it will replace your command line yeah um here yeah there's an example there is, yeah this is one dev cmd live this will basically replace your uh, CMD command for only if you're using uh, live push local mode. Mm -hmm. uh, but then there is uh, dev run, which allows you to do like you can uh, do multiple dev runs and like I don't know install an uh, an npm package that you only need for local development mm -hmm. or something like that. You could also dev copy some stuff Ooh, only dev for copy. local I mode. I could use that. Um, and the combination of uh, of these two uh, maybe uh, is uh, it's a better solution than having a, a script run whenever you log USSH into the container. Like again, this this will depend on what the specific use specific use case for for this user is. But um, from my experience, you can probably make these uh, directives uh, work. Does this if I'm developing locally and when when I pushed my device unless I specify some environment variables in the live push command they're not going to be present on the device but what if I use dev copy to copy an environment file into my container and then dev run to source that environment file before running nice. my script and That's then nice. all of a sudden I've injected nice. environment variables from a file that only happens in local push but when I push it to device, those environment variables are maybe provided by the fleet or the supervisor or other mechanisms. Yeah. But this is a way to use. But if you use those in combination with an environment file, you can you can install it and 
source it, but only yeah. in live mode. And I think I have to start using yeah, this now because I definitely have that use case where I'm expecting things like the an API key to be set in my environment. And right. Yeah. Locally, it's not. And you end up but... doing uh, your Belena push command with dash n something, something dash n something yep. else, trying yep. to pass them in on the command line. Yeah. It gets messy. Exactly. I love this. Uh, yes, yeah, I don't see why that wouldn't work. Yeah, that's no, but... that's a great use case. <laughs> Yeah, well, maybe... especially since you can commit it and push it like that, like whenever I do local development, I end up adding things like my compose file, my data dot env yeah. environment file to my compose, but I have to remove it before I push my changes because it won't yeah. work if you're pushing the cloud. But these I commands, have... you can leave them in your Docker file. They just yeah. stay there. I it's may great. have had to renew my Forex API key Here is... during Hack Week because I uploaded <laughs> GitHub. <laughs> Here's one. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Just one example. This is the Docker file for the audio block, and it's right here. Like, this is what I use for local development, and so I can I commit this no problem. Because when you're not in local mode, this is ignored yeah. completely, mm -hmm. and it's fine. Wow, yeah. Alexander K. Jones, forum user, you got some new hotness coming your way. That thread did not cover any of this, so. We'll have to wow, add like, these links or the video, add the video to the thread so he has full, so they have full context. We can watch his waffle bit for a while. Uh, I have something, if we're done with that, I have something that I want to talk to Mr. Buckles yep. about. Does it involve MS Paint? Mr. Buckles, if you could open MS Paint. <laughs> uh, no, I, I'm, I'm waiting for your artistic talent, Phil. We haven't seen any of your, uh, your artistic talent today. Phil's not bad. Have you seen Phil on one of the early uh, release parties where he's like drawing and throwing around GIFs and stuff? It's not bad. You Thanks, Phil. Well, I, I thought oh, Phil that's... was a Prez uh, expert, not, a, not an MS Paint expert. That's when I live hacked something on one of the happy hours and then drew a diagram quickly. That's when oh, yeah. you were. Yeah. Oh, that's my mind. What I was going to say, Mr. Buckles, is during Hack Week, you made a bunch of different blocks. A bevy. A bevy of blocks. <laughs> and actually, let me show you my screen. I wondered, like, um, with with this project that we've got here, that people might have seen the Labs project, uh, Belena Sense. Belena Sense is now entirely made up of blocks. Why can't I see it? It's got a green icon. Where's Blaine the Sense? Search it. Oh. It's gotta be Somebody stolen Blaine the Sense. Uh, <laughs> really? Are you, which, uh, are you on the under tab? Fleets, maybe? Yeah. It's not, it's not Fleet, because you need... Oh. oh. There, there we go. There we go. My brain. So Blaine the Sense, if you look at the code, <laughs> is actually made up entirely, if I go to the Docker Compose, is made up entirely of blocks now. So you've got the dashboard block, which does Grafana for you. Um, it has got the connector, which is bringing in data from MQTT, and it's all going into an influx database. So now you don't need any code to write Belena Sense. And I was wondering whether a challenge to anybody watching, could anybody make another project that's just based out of blocks? And these are the blocks we've had. And I wondered, Mr. Buckles, given you've got quite a lot of knowledge of various blocks now, what do you reckon you could make? Like your wake on land block, I understand. But like, what does your file transfer block do? So the, the, the bevy of blocks that we built for Hack Week are probably intended to all work together as like a, um, a hardware development stack. So the idea would be, the, I mean, the, the main focus of what we presented at Hack Week was this analog discovery block. And for context of the viewers, that's a block that communicates with, I think I've got one somewhere. Uh, one, of, one of these, which is basically a USB um, oscilloscope. And so our problem was that it's very difficult for remote teams to work on hardware um, because often there's one engineer who has that piece of hardware and then it's very difficult for us to replicate that, the issues they're, they're experiencing for somebody else on the other side of the world. So the idea is that you could hook one of these up to it. Um, it'll then expose uh, two, two interfaces. One uh, was a uh, Jupyter notebook, so we can jump into it and write scripts for it. And the other was a, um, uh, a VNC server, so we can actually jump into the, um, the GUI app for, uh, for the device and see the waveforms on the scope itself. Um, so what we would do with all these blocks is that we'd have the analog discovery block on there as a, the primary uh, application. The file transfer block would allow us to really easily um, push scripts and 
pull uh, waveforms from that the other block in a shared in a shared volume. Um, the wake on LAN block might be to wake up the device that we're trying to test. Say, for example, it's a um, piece of hardware that is su support that supports wake on LAN. We can use that to wake it up. Uh, what else do we have in there? I think Ryan had a cron job block, so we could schedule it to do that maybe every hour or so to pull logs from it. Say we were doing like a, um, uh, a time sample thing that was occurring every so often and we wanted to check that, we could do that with the scope. So the idea would be like those collections of blocks could create uh, I see. a stack of things for a hardware engineer to yeah. use. Okay. But I still think we, like an open... Before we get a bit farther in it, if Mr. Chris is watching, I wonder if we shouldn't have all fleets also show up under projects by default, since it's just the link to the source code, right? In Hub, I mean. <laughs> yeah. If Mr. Chris, Chris is watching, sorry. Back, back Take to notes. the block. He is, and he's shaking his fist. He's like, <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> But my, my open challenge to anybody is, can you make another fleet that's entirely made up of just blocks, like Belay the Senses? Mm. Because... It's pretty cool that we've made Ballet in a Sense with no code. But doing it once is a nice trick. Doing it twice is another <laughs> kettle of fish and sort of proves that it's doable. Um, so there's an, we've got a number of things. We've got Wake on LAN. I mean, I think Node Red gets you quite a lot of stuff, doesn't it, in one block? Because you can always connect. Cheating a little bit, together. though, isn't it? <laughs> Maybe. Kind of says, Maybe. That's not really a, a standalone block. That's kind of like you have to then yeah. write your. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a block because it. It's, it, it doesn't does do anything you're supposed to it. do, yeah, yeah. but you still have to tell it to do stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's a cool um, challenge, though, because right now we're is. about to wrap up the Belena Hub. We're not wrapping up. We still have like a good number of weeks, but uh, up until November 30th, you can submit your project to Belena Hub to be part of the challenge. You can oh, win nice a cash prize, that. get featured on Etcher, uh, and then we were talking about the next version of it, and perhaps there's a theme. So, Phil, maybe that's yeah. that's the theme for the next one. Yeah, Build yeah. it completely out of blocks. Uh, this Occam block, it's brand new. It's been contributed by the company Occam, and it's about oh. uh, connecting edge devices, end-to-end -end encrypted connections, so a data pipe between servers, drones, edge devices, anything. It like goes across any sort of transport layer, end-to-end -end connect uh, encrypted. So cool. there's loads of use cases that that could open up. Um, Net data block if you want to do some analysis of what's going on in the device. There is the, the main ones that we've talked about a lot, connector and dashboard. FBCP copies uh, whatever's on your frame buffer to a connected TFT screen. Host name, I think Tomas made that to change the host name. <laughs> it's very useful. Oh, yeah, uh, I've, got it. I've got that on like five or six projects at least. <laughs> I was going to try and throw shade, but it's really useful. It is really useful. It could be a lot smaller. It could be a lot smaller. Oh, yeah. But it is super useful. It's be huge. How big is it? Is, it? is it? Is it? Yeah. Because, uh, yeah. Okay. Point taken. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wi-Fi There's no reason why. It's not huge because the lovely Mr. Rahul made it really nice and small. That will detect if a device doesn't have an internet connection and expose a Wi-Fi access point so that you can then connect All it right. to something. Audio that plays pulse audio, Bluetooth, obviously it gives you a Bluetooth connection. Sensor is our block that will find any of the supported sensors that are connected. So humidity and temperature and uh, UV sensors, lots of different things. And it will auto detect what it is and it will pipe it through to MQTT for you. So you can just plug and play sensors. Pulse uh, detects pulses on GPIO. The file transfer one, Buck was just talked about, an X server one. So if you've got a project that is going to need to use X, like our browser blocks uses X server to put Chromium onto a display. Um, but we've also got Scratch project that uses X server. Lots of things do. Now we've got a block that you can just drop in and you can connect to the X11 socket and you don't have to try and bring Take in somebody X using that, right? There's actually, um, I think we're, we're actually using that block inside of the Animal Discovery block as well. So block nice. and block. Nice. Whoa. Uh, tail scale, I don't understand, but Buckles and Kyle do. <laughs> Has that PR been merged yet, Buckles? Oh, uh, I, I, I fixed up the change. I need to re push again to that. It's just a time thing. I haven't gotten around to pushing it yet. And the I'm block not going to use it until your changes are in. All right. All right. I'll get it pushed. <laughs> and the block does. It's a VPN, isn't it? Kind of, yeah. Um, so, I mean, Kyle, you're probably better explain this than I am. 
Like uh, I, I, I mean, I only found out it recently. I know it's a VPN just based on a wire guard and they have public servers, so you don't need to open ports. So if you want to connect all of your devices to a common network, like your phone and your laptop and a Raspberry Pi, and you can optionally bridge that Pi so your home whole network is now accessible when you're away from home is my use case. Um, mm -hmm. Tailscale is the... It, this block, I believe, runs an exit point. So if you run this on a Raspberry Pi and you install the Tailscale app on your phone and you sign up and you, it'll it'll create a, a WireGuard connection through their proxy servers to your Raspberry Pi with open, out opening ports that allows you to access your home network. That's, I believe, my use case. Nice. And because it runs on WireGuard, it's supposed to be very fast. Um, I already run a WireGuard server, but it would be cool to try one that doesn't require opening ports because they have public servers that it'll bounce off of to to get a connection. So that's another yeah. option. There's some more hardware ones Buck was talked about earlier, but then there's a couple basic sensor that monitors a pin and sends an event on MQTT. Uh, run cron jobs, the browser block if you want a browser running on your device. Binary weather is pretty interesting. Sends a one or a zero MQTT message depending on the weather forecast. I don't know how you can boil the weather forecast in <laughs> for one or a zero. That's That's good, good, bad. In there, eh? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great, terrible. It depends on what you like. That's uh, the fin block we did talk about before that helps with the coprocessor that runs on the Blainer fin. You can sleep the device and do a bunch of other stuff with that. Uh, basic motor controls a physical pin with MQTT signals. A logic block takes MQTT events and sends uh, MQTT events as output to base, based on logic that you put into the block. A reverse this, proxy. This is really clever what he did with logic block here. His use case was was a, a, a next generation of Bolana plant where he was taking two different inputs and putting them through this logic block. So one input was the weather block and he would set some thresholds for uh, humidity or rain levels or something like that. I think there was a fixed threshold on how much rain you're getting or how whether you're expecting rain. And if it was above that, it would be a one. If it was below that, it would be zero, something like That's that. Cool. And that would go into the logic block. And on the other side, there is a web socket block that would allow you to press and hold a button on your phone that could be on or off. So that would go into the logic block. Now the logic block looks at both of those and can determine if one is on or both are on. It could do an and or an or or whatever kind of logic operation you want to do on that it takes multiple sources runs the logic operator whatever you choose and then outputs a single value so nice. knowing whether or not it's going to rain and whether or not you're holding the button means it can choose whether or not to run your water pump nice. you can add more inputs to that so now it can be like it can be looking at the weather and a calendar maybe or the button on your phone and he had uh, he, he came up with this as a way to take okay. many inputs and create one output and whether or not you want to run the pump and that was, uh, Andre, Andre. he did um, yeah. He was one of our first Berlin Labs residents, and yeah, he did this plant saving uh, project, which there is a forum post for that Andrew is rapidly finding now. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, I was too busy. Felipe. Uh, yeah, you, you're right, Felipe. You can describe the UK weather. We're probably one value, like meh. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to do one and zero, but meh would describe it pretty well. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that is pretty cool. I wonder, yeah, so I have an open challenge. Anybody watching or watch this later or anybody in Belina, can you make another fleet or project that only uses blocks that does something useful? Like playing the sense. And there'll be a prize for the first person who achieves it. I'm just not Ooh. sure what that might be. It might, might be something I find and send you. Something <laughs> Andrew finds. It just pays in response to Andrew. That's like Andrew's problem. Yeah, yeah, just, just, just Andrew will send you his jumper if you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down. We should integrate some sort of like informal bounties. You know, like we'll I'll, swag ya. I'm totally down to buy someone like five co like a coffee for the entire week, right? It's worth of, of gift card if they actually pull off a challenge off the show. You win a Belena t shirt of your choosing. There we are. Oh, we have that new Etcher Pro one, right? I want that hub one. I haven't got oh, that. Oh, hub. One. The hub one's the new one. I want the hub I one. I have one that. either. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't have one either. There you go, community. You can be the I first David one. Has them. David's probably hoarding them all on Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Anybody else? Anything else? 
Cool. No, if you liked how we've been up. hanging out here, everyone's welcome to uh, join the show. We'll figure out better ways to do that in the future. Uh, if you're like, no, I want more than that. Well, we are hiring. So check out Belena.io slash jobs. You can check out an open role or make up your own. We'd love to meet you. Oh, jeez. All right. There's a genius himself behind the weather block. Andre, <laughs> going to bankrupt nice. me. Cool. Uh, we won't be around next week because Belena have regular weeks where we don't have any scheduled meetings. Um, and since this is a meeting happening in the public, then that will we'll follow that here. So it won't be one next week, but then the following week, there'll be another clinic. So mm. hopefully we'll see you then. Catch cool. you later. See y'all.